Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series and in today's video we are going to be continuing on with the fire we're going to be continuing on with the sequence where the player can actually you know walk up to the fire and you know light the fire if they actually have the three pieces of firewood and everything else they need so having said that if you haven't watched the last video I definitely advise you check it out in the last video we created this little fire with the particle system and we've got the three logs as well and what I want to focus on today is pretty much the functionality of that so getting the player to walk up to the little decal on the floor and light the fire when they enter a little trigger box that little trigger box will check whether or not the player has got the three pieces of firewood and you know things will sort of go from there and we're also going to stop the player dying so quickly as well so they can complete if you know more objectives and in addition to object you know on the note of objectives we're also going to be changing the objective once the player actually has three pieces of firewood um, you know to tell it to light the fire and we're also going to be changing the objective once the player has actually lit the fire so that it will change the objective to you know collect the hexagon key to enter the survival mansion that we're going to be creating over there so if you haven't checked out the level plan it's got all of the objectives on there and it can sort of help you guys you know make a bit more sense of what I am saying but for now let's go ahead and start off with the sequence to creating the fire so the first thing that I want to do is I pretty much want to create a trigger box and what this trigger box is going to do is it's going to allow us to check whether or not a player is in an area um, so if the player begins to overlap with that we can sort of you know fire off a sequence of um you know script stuff so you know lighting the fire taking the logs out of the inventory and that kind of stuff so let's go ahead and do that so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to create a you know a trigger volume this trigger volume like i said is going to allow us to check whether or not you know it's in that area so to create that trigger volume just go to volumes on the left hand side scroll all the way down and the trigger volume should be on the bottom and then just go ahead and drag it into your scene just like that and we need to make sure that it's actually you know capturing the whole area so go ahead and do that so just make sure you scale it so that way when the player gets close you know it's going to do exactly what we need because we don't want the player having to walk you know right in the middle i want it to sort of start it off so as soon as he sort you know gets close to it all lights it up so that is great so one thing that i want to do now then is i actually want to test whether or not our trigger box is going to be working so we're going to be setting up a little test from that and if it does work we can sort of go up from there so what i'm going to do basically is i'm going to create uh you know use the level blueprints to check whether or not the player is you know you know when the player begins to overlap with this box it will you know print a string and if it does print the string then we know our functionality and our logic is all working and we can go from there so let's go ahead and do that so I'm gonna open up a level blueprint now the reason I'm using level blueprint instead of like a character blueprint or something is because it's gonna be specific to the level it's gonna be part of this uh, sort of fire thing that we've going, got, got going on here so I'm going to do it all in here. So what we're going to do then is we're going to select the trigger volume and we're going to turn this into an event. So select anywhere in your level blueprint and add an event for trigger volume, a volume, go to collision and begin overlap. So basically what this is going to do now is whenever, you know, the player begins to overlap with this trigger volume, it's going to fire off whatever's next. So under other actor that other actor is going to be the you know the character so the character is going to be a blueprint and that's going to be the third person character so we've got to cast to the third person character so go ahead and do that and hook it up just like that and the next thing that we do is we are going to print a string just like that and it's just going to say hello so let's go ahead and test this and see whether or not it's working so go ahead and compile press play and let's just go ahead and run up to the fire and see exactly what happens so i'm going to run over to it it's all the way over here and might i add it is looking really really great and as soon as i get close to it you can see the little print string in the top left hand corner there that said hello that was great so that's all working perfectly fine let's add the next step so the next thing that we need to do then with our trigger volume is we need to you know check whether or not the player actually has enough firewood to start the fire so let's go ahead and see if we can find a way to you know start to script that in so we're going to open up our level blueprint again and we're going to get rid of this print string because we don't need it anymore we need to run a branch this branch is going to check you know whether or not they've got free firewood and the way we're going to do that is you know get the number of firewood uh, variable and check to see whether or not it's equal to free so let's go ahead and do that so from third person character just drag it out and type in get number of wood or whatever we called it 
And if you don't have it, make sure you go back to like the previous episodes. Everything you should need will be in there. And as for condition, just type in equal to, and we are just going to look for integer equal. There we go. So as long as a and b is, you know, true. So I mean, as long as a and b are, you know, the same, it's going to, you know, set it off as true. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got, we want it to be equal to three. So we're going to leave three in the bottom there. And then a is going to be number of wood. So if these two are equal, number of wood and three. It's going to go to true and you know from here we can sort of add in the script to light the fire and for false we're not going to do anything we might even have like a little pop-up that says um i don't know anything really like go and collect some more firewood or something like that so the next thing that we want to do then is we want to start to change the objective so what we're going to do then is we are going to pretty much copy our you know our script from the objective change onto here and we're going to do a few other bits as well so that we can get all of that working so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to open up my objective change doesn't matter which one you use um if you've only got one just copy and paste everything from here and we're pretty much just going to be changing the values basically to you know do everything that we need so go ahead and go back into your level blueprint now and then just copy and paste all of this in here now it is really really long because it's all attached to our save game system don't forget towards the end of the series i'm also going to be showing you how to add buttons to reset the save game how to you know start a new game all from the main menu and that kind of stuff but for now this is looking great so there we are so we are going to cast to third person character again if it's true and set player objective we're not going to set it to objective two we are going to set it to collect hexagon key so that's the next objective in our list pretty much so make sure you change all instances of it all the way down to the end here so once again collect hexagon key and one more time let's just chuck it in there collect hexagon key there we are, that is perfect, that is pretty much all three instances of that, so that should be working just fine. And one last thing that we need to do to actually make this work is we need to create another saver subclass to pretty much just handle the information while it's being saved. So just create a new variable and call it saver subclass, just like we did with the old one. And as for variable type, just type in save game and just change that over. Um, there we are. So change variable type. All good. That is fine. So everything seems to have been broken. Uh, what is this doing? Da -da 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 -da. That's fine. So let's go ahead and compile this and see what happens. So it doesn't seem to be working over here for some reason, and that's just because we haven't got get player character in there. But that's an easy fix. Hopefully now then, if the player actually has all of the firewood, it should, you know, change the objective for us. So go ahead and close that and let's test this. So we're going to press play. I'm going to quickly run and get all of the firewood. So that's one in my inventory. And let's get the other one in the lake over here. Two. And three. There we are. So objective complete on the first one. That is great. Now we're going to run over to the second one and see what happens, see if it changes it. And there we are, collect hexagon key, and that is working great. There is one still, one small problem we do have there, and that was that, you know, it's, it's making us die. We're dying way too quick. So we need to open up our third person character and adjust the hunger system so we don't die so quickly. So we've got to play around with the hunger values, which are somewhere on here. It's been a real long time since I actually made this uh, system, but by the looks of things, Every tick it is just adding a delay and you know removing a little bit of hunger away from the player. So we are going to change this to something like 3 instead of 5 and hopefully that should make you live a little bit longer. There you are, that is working great. And let's go ahead and press play to test that and see if the player is still going to be dying, make sure it still works and everything. There you are. So if you look in the top left hand corner, it's still going down, but it's just not going down as quickly, which is working perfect. Cool. So next thing that we need to do is we need to get the little objective complete widget to pop up on the screen again, you know, once we start to light the fire. So if you remember when we collected all three pieces of firewood, it lit up on the screen and it was great. We've got to do the same thing for the fire now. And we are pretty much just going to copy that script, basically. So we're going to find wherever we put that and that was in the wood inventory item i believe 
we're going to pretty much copy the stuff to create the widget and add it to the viewport. As simple as that. And we are going to add it onto our little sequence in the level blueprint. There we are, so we're going to chuck this down to the end. There we are, and we've got to make sure we've got both of these going in there. And that should be working fine. Let's see if it all pops up and works great for us this time. So press play. That's one piece of firewood. Second one should be over here. Okay. And second one. There we are, that's working great. And let's go over here to the last piece and says objective complete again that is perfect that is working fine we also need to reset the player objective um, because it's not sort of working too great at the moment um, so what I'm gonna do for that I am pretty much just going to reset it as soon as the player spawns and then we can sort of sort out the you know the save game stuff towards the end of the series so I'm gonna go ahead and chuck this down here and I'm not too sure what it does say on here but let's just go ahead and do it and um, we are just gonna set this click firewood that is great the player spawns over here. So hopefully now when the player walks into that it's going to change it back to collect firewood. There we are. And everything should be working now. All the objectives should be changing. So let's just go ahead and double check. So we're going to collect the firewood as it says. One, two, three. Ooh, whoops. I can't even collect this one. It's a bit odd. So we need to fix that up, but there we are. So it says collect firewood still. We still need to change that in a moment, which shouldn't be too hard, but all of our objectives are changing just fine. So what we need to do is we need to actually, you know, change the objective after they have the three pieces of firewood. So that's pretty straightforward. We pretty much got to do the same thing as we just did now with copying, and pasting everything over. And we just got to pretty much put that into the wood inventory pickup, I guess. So just once again, copy and paste it from the objective change over here select everything that we need control C and then just paste it in here there you are and once again object make sure you put that into get player character that is working great and one last thing that we need to do is we need to change all the values and once again we need to create a saver subclass so go ahead and do that saver subclass make sure you change the variable type to save game change variable type that's all good it's gonna come up with all kinds of errors and everything but if you compile it it'll work just fine as for the objective make sure that you set this to whatever we need so instead of it being collect firewood we're going to set it to you know light the fire and we've got to make sure we change all three instances of that as well so go ahead and do that light the fire and light the fire again cool that's working great so let's go ahead and try that and see what happens now so we've got our objective being collect firewood that's fine collect firewood once we get all three of those it should tell us to light the fire in a moment now that's two and that's three and it tells me to light the fire objective complete and if we run over to this it's going to change it to collect hex hexagon key now there's only really one last thing that we need to do and that is that we need to make this all pretty much be hidden at the start of a level until the player actually lights the fire and the way we're going to be doing this is we are going to be setting up some kind of script or some kind of matinee sequence to you know sort of hide that and then make it appear and we can sort of just you know fire that off directly from our level blueprint it's all going to be working great but anyway that is pretty much everything that I wanted to go over for today's video we've got all of our objectives working we've got all of our scripts running in the background to check whether or not the player has got the you know the firewood to start the fire so pretty much all we need to do now is just create that little sequence that's going to hide it and then make it all just sort of appear you know once the you know once the player has all the firewood and they run into that it's going to be pretty much straightforward and that is pretty much exactly what we're going to be doing in the next video thanks for watching make sure you comment like and subscribe share the video share the love and keep on creating i will see you next time goodbye